Hi, I'm Paul DeBartolomeo. Welcome to Training Minutes. In this month's segment, we're going to deal with an overturn with a partial ejection and a person pinned underneath the car. As we can see, our victim has their leg pinned under the A post and their arm pinned under the B post. In order to extricate this person, we're going to have to lift the vehicle and get their body parts out. The first thing we need to do is stabilize the vehicle for our lift. Firefighters are going to come in and the first thing they're going to do is stabilize the front end of the vehicle. We're going to be lifting the back side of the vehicle. We don't want this vehicle to slide forward on us as we lift. As we can see here, the victim's leg is pinned under the A-post. There is a small void between the ground and the car. We want to be able to chalk up in there so that when we lift, there's no downward pressure put on this victim's leg. So the firefighters are going to get, again come in with our step chocks and they're going to fill that void with cribbing. We're going to opt to do a multi-point parallel lift on this. What we're going to do is pass a 4x4 beam, an 8-foot beam, through the back window here. We're going to build up two lift stacks, one on each side of the car. We're going to build them tight up to the underside of that 4x4 beam, and we're actually going to be able to lift this vehicle completely up off the ground in order to free our victim. We have some options as far as this lift goes. We could slide some airbags in under the roof and uh, lift like that. These are high pressure airbags. That's uh, sheet metal. It's not very secure. We'd probably get a lot of deformity and probably wouldn't get a very good lift result. Another option we have is we could try to lift off the trunk. Again, we're dealing with the trunk cover. It's sheet metal. The trunk is hollow. We would probably get another, uh, a lot of deformity. Another thing we'd have to worry about, all the weight on this vehicle is in the front in the motor. As we can see, it's sloped down. We're getting into that threshold of height here. If we remember from a previous segment, our lift stacks and our capture stacks should really only be about 48 inches high. We're kind of at that threshold right now where we could get unstable. We also have an angle here, so in order to get good contact, we'd have to angle our bags with wedges, and we could have one of our bags kick out. So for our evolution, what we're going to do is we're going to do this parallel lift with the 4x4 beam. I think it'll be a much safer and secure lift. So we're going to get into lifting this vehicle now. All right, so as you can see, we've prepared a uh, 4x4 lift stack to extricate this person from underneath the car. What we're going to do now is we're going to complete our lift stack. We're going to come in with a plywood pad to give ourselves a solid base, securely put that on top of our stack, and we're going to pass our 4x4 through the back end of the car. We set our bags up. Again, we want to use stacked bags. In this case, we're using a 20-ton bag and a 17-ton bag. We want to try to use the biggest bags we can, get in place securely, so that we can get that added height we need. Okay, and pass it through. All right, we're going to pass that 4x4 through. What we want to try to do is securely get that 4x4 right into the corner here. When we pass it through, we want to make sure it's got even coverage on both sides of the vehicle. So it, it might be wise for a firefighter to walk around and check and make sure we have even overhang on both sides of the vehicle. We want to center it on the X, but we don't want it overhanging more on one side than the other. Good on my side, Ed. Here. Okay, the last thing we want to do is really firm this up into place. So we'll take a few 2x4 shims there, and we'll lock this 4x4 right into place. A 2x4s. 2x4 shims posing. Now, as we can see, we're butted right up against the door frame here, so we'll get optimum list. All right, we're set up. We're even on both sides. We're ready to start our lift. Okay, are you all set on your side? Good. Joe, you're all set? All set. Okay, up on the lower bags. Stop on the lower bags. Okay, let's switch them out. Go to the top bags. All right, what we have here is we have our inline relief valves in place. If we didn't have a Y in our uh, master control kit where we could run two bags at the same time, we'd have to utilize our inline relief valves. What this allows us to do is shut air off from the bag, 
we can disconnect our hose from the bottom bag. The bag is locked out. We can connect it to our top bags. We need to do this on both sides. As far as the controller goes, the firefighter running the controller has got to try as best he can to apply even pressure to both activating knobs. If we were to do it unevenly, the lift is going to get uneven. So when we switch up bags, the command is now going to be up on top. He's got to apply pressure to those activating knobs evenly. Okay, Ed, are you all set? Good. Joe, you're set? Yep. Okay, we're going to go up on the top bags. Okay, stop on the top bags. Okay, we have our clearance. All right, as we can see, we've gained our clearance. We're going to take a minute to reset all our stabilization. We're going to lock this load out. Our 4x4 is going to act as a stabilizer. We could now move on to the extrication of this patient. Three, two, and action. As we can see, we've stabilized the load. We've captured it. We've got enough lift now to perform our extrication. The firefighters are going to be able to get the body parts that were pinned under the A and the B post loose, and they're going to start to extricate this person. We have to try to pay particular attention to C-spine immobilization. This is an overturn. This person may have incurred neck and back injuries. So as best we can, we want to immobilize that head, board and collar this patient, and pass them off to EMS as quickly as we can. So as you can see, what we've done here is pass a 4x4 post, an 8 foot long post, through the back window here. We've secured it in place. We've utilized it to lift this vehicle. It's a great method to get a good degree of lift that we could get somebody out of an overturn when they're pinned. I'm Paul DeBartolomeo. Thank you for watching Training Minutes.